Hi, so welcome back to the stream. I guess the uh, we had a, a bit uh, issue, so we needed to break up the stream and then restart again. Esther Akosa, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me. And then re if you are rejoining, give me a thumbs up on the video, just making sure that um, everybody who was on the uh, other stream uh, has come back to this stream. So we continue with the discussion. Eoli Kobana, uh, Seiram, Edmond. Good evening, Eoli. Forgive me if I don't mention your name right, okay? Seiram, Kobala. Okay, so good evening. Um, so give me a thumbs up on the video when you join. It helps us a lot. That way we can uh, grow the channel together and reach as many students as possible because that is what the YouTube algorithm wants. So smash the like button on the main video page. Let it turn blue so that, hey, we together grow the channel. Gabriel Gogu, I see you with a uh, love emoji in the chat box. Thank you very much. Uh, Ezekiel Baden said, rejoining. Good, we are back. Sir, please, I hope we will be able to go through all the fundamentals of management accounting uh, together. Yeah, Ezekiel, I am hoping so. But you know there are a lot of topics that... Uh, we have on our table in various subjects that we need to cover on the live stream. So maybe you would not be able to go as much as uh, you would wish we go through uh, on the live stream here because of the fact that there are other topics uh, in other subjects that I equally have to cover on the live stream. So we will try as much as we can to cover as many of the funda fundamentals as we can cover within the time frame given to us under consideration. So let's just uh, stay connected and then let's see how we go with that. Mohammed Nasif Suleiman, I see your emoji hands there. You are welcome. Mom Ann said, good day, sir. Good day, Mom Ann. Um, Nosiku Lubinda said, where can I get a program? Where can I get a program? Just join. Which program are you talking about? Are you talking about my, uh, my online courses? Uh, if you are about my online courses, uh, you can call or WhatsApp 050 114 9296 050. Uh oh, that is outside. So let's put it here 050 114 9296 050. 1149296. If you are inquiring about our online courses, um, Nosiku, then uh, you can call this number. If you are outside of Ghana, you add plus 233 to it, uh, 050-114-9296. Uh, we have our courses available online, and you can study directly under my mentorship, get access to the full course, join our weekly Zoom sessions, and also have me as your personal mentor and uh, have me hold sessions with you personally to deal with any challenges that you are having so you can prepare well for your examination. So if you're looking for something like that, you can call or WhatsApp this number. Ebenezer said, sorry, Ezekiel said, sir, please, how do we get ebooks? Um, 
ebooks, ebooks. I have books uh, on Amazon, so you can, if you want uh, the Kindle versions of my books, you can get them on Amazon. You just search for Insura Premium on Amazon, and uh, you could get some of my uh, content uh, in there, or, 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 and, and then buy. Definitely, it's not free. I think around two or five dollars, something like that. And you could get a Kindle version of my book. However, if you want ebooks, like that comes along with our courses. For instance, if you enroll in our full course, Management Accounting, you get access to the lecture videos. You get access to our weekly ability to join our weekly uh, Zoom sessions, full lecture Zoom session. Then you get access to all my ebooks. So you get access to my book on the subject. You get access to our question kits, and you get access to all our question catalogs to help you to prepare well for the exam. So really, uh, Ezekiel, if you want to get uh, ebooks like my content, really ebooks, then you would have to be a paid student and uh, enroll in one of our courses, study directly under my mentorship. Alternatively, like I said, you can get a Kindle version of my books on Amazon. You can just search for Ishira Premium, and then you will be able to get some of the, uh, the Kindle version of my books and then read it in the Kindle app, reading in the Amazon Kindle app. So that is an alternative way if you, you are, maybe you are attending lectures elsewhere or for some reason you wouldn't want to enroll in a course or something like that. So Ezekiel, that is what uh, I can say about your question there. Okay, so I posted a question we're gonna be discussing today on my Instagram page. So Instagram is also a place that you need to follow me because discussion for each day will be posted on Instagram. So the question today, you know, has been posted already on Instagram. In case you don't have it, you can go to Instagram and take uh, the question from there so that you can follow uh, through today. We want to look at activity-based costing and look at how we can uh, put the pieces together on that. We had explained the principles about this already in the last three part sessions. In case you missed that, I'm going to leave uh, uh, the links to that on the in the description to this video so you can uh, watch that as well. So let's go straight up into our discussion today. And we are looking at preparation of a cost sheet. Let me read the requirement of the question. Una manufactures three products, A, B, and C. Uh, data for the period just ended is as follows. So we have the production units. We have the selling price, respectively. We have the material cost, and then we have the labor cost, and we have, we have labor hours per unit. Then we are told that labor is paid at the rate of $5 per hour, and overheads for the period are as follows. We have setup cost, receiving, dispatch, and then machining, all add up to be $190,000. Then we are giving the cost drivers. So immediately you have cost pool, and then cost drivers, it means that activity-based costing is going to be coming into town. So we see the cost drivers there, machine hours per unit. We see number of setups. We see number of deliveries received. We see number of orders dispatched. So all these cost drivers have been given to us. The requirement of the question is A, calculate the cost and hence profits per unit Absorbing all overheads on the basis of labor hours. So the A aspect of the question is telling us how to deal with the issue in relation to the cost sheet and enhance the profit using the labor hours to absorb the overheads, which means that we are going to be using the absorption costing. Straight up, right? It means we're going to be using the absorption costing. So let's see how we go through that. Just want to make sure I have an ample division here. Maybe let's bring this back a little bit here. Okay. So now, A aspect of the question is asking us to do absorption costing. So cost cut. And we are using absorption costing. The reason why we know it is an absorption costing requirement is because of the fact that uh, we are told, 
because of the fact that we are told that we should absorb the overhead using labor hours. Now, if you remember what we did and the absorption costing, we made mention of the fact that the assumption and the absorption costing is we want to absorb the overhead using labor hours. We want to absorb the overhead using labor hours. So if we are going to be absorbing the overheads using labor hours, how then do we go with that? How do we go with that? So let's bring the first item. There are three products in here. So let's bring in the products. So we have A, B, and C. Let's slash our currency sign up respectively for that. Then let's bring in the cost item. We see material cost there. Material cost per unit is $5. Remember, we are preparing the cost card per unit. $10. And then $10. Then we bring labor cost. Now, in the labor cost, we are giving the labor hours per unit. Two for A, one for B, one for C, and then we are giving the labor cost per hour to be $5. So to get the labor cost or the labor rate per hour to be $5. So to get the labor cost, we multiply the hours by what? The rate per hour. So A is two hours, so five, two, that will be 10. B is one hour, so that's gonna be five. And C is also one hour, and that is gonna be five. So that is how we get our uh, labor cost, respectively, by multiplying the labor rate per hour with the uh, total labor hours per unit. So once we have that, we bring in the prime cost, and that's going to be 15, 15, 15. Whoa, that's good. Oh, material cost, I think I'm mixing it. Material cost is five here. Okay, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. This thing. Five and ten, I'm right, no problem with that. So once you bring your prime cost, what do you do? You add factory overheads. Now, this is where the workings comes in. This is where the workings come in comes in and I want you to make sure you follow the idea very well here. This is where the workings come in. So how do we slash in the workings? The overheads, we are told that the overheads should be absorbed using labor hours. Now, what it means is that we need to calculate the overhead absorption rate, which is going to be a total budgeted overheads. All right? Divided by the total budgeted labor hours. Now, we have been given the budgeted labor hours to be $190,000, but what we don't have is the labor hours, the total labor hours. So we need to compute that. So let's bring in the product A, B, C, then let's bring in the labor hours per unit. So labor hours per unit. And we have it as 211. Then we bring the production units. So with the production unit, what are we going to have? 20,000 here. 25,000 here. And 2,000 here. So you multiply up to get a total labor hours. So this is going to be 40,000. This is going to be 25,000. And this is going to be 2,000. So that is how respectively we get a labor cost. Sorry, the labor hours. But we are not interested in the individual. We are interested in the total amount. So we add the three up to give us the total labor hours. And that's going to be 67,000 hours. All right, 67,000 hours. So once we have the total hours, we can now calculate what? The overhead absorption rate. 
So you bring it up from a, a below 67,000 hours. So that gives us the overhead absorption rate of, let me grab my calculator. So let's see that up, 190,000 divided by 67,000. That's 2.84. 2.84. So 190,000 divided by 67,000. 2.84. Stay with me carefully, dollars per labor hour. So that is our overhead absorption rate. Good? So once we have the overhead absorption rate, it means that we can now come and what? Absorb it and get our total cost. So when we are absorbing, remember we said 2.84 per labor hour. We multiply the overhead absorb by what? The actual labor hours we use. So if you look at it, the actual labor hours respectively was 211. So 2.84 by 2, that gives us 5.68. This was one hour, so it will be 2.84. This was one hour, 2.84. I hope you're getting the concept very well. So that is how we absorb the overhead. So once we absorb that, we can get our production or factory cost. So let's add it up. That is 20.68, 17.84, 17 17.84. So respectively, that is our production cost. Respectively, that is our production cost. Now, so the question said, we should calculate both the cost and hence the profit per unit. So once we have the cost, we can bring the selling price per unit, and respectively it was, um, let's see, 2020, 20, 20. So 20 here, 20 here, 20 here. So if you check profit or loss, the first one will make a loss of no 68. Okay. Second one will make a loss of that will be 2.26, I guess. 20 minus 17.84. 2.16. 2 All right. So that is our profit and cost card. Remember, under the absorption costing. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. Okay? We bring in our prime cost, blah, blah, blah. But then we come to calculate the overhead absorption rate. And then we absorb the overhead absorption rate into the actual cost incurred. And that is how we get our computation. So I hope everybody is okay. You comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me. And then put it down so that we go to the... B aspect of the question, which is the main discussion for today, and that is the activity-based costing. Okay, that is the activity-based costing. I'm going to snap this as well and post it on Instagram, so uh, you can follow me as well on Instagram, and then you'll be able to get the image of that in case you're not able to see something or you are not able to write before we clean it up. All right. 
So I see some comments coming in. Uh, Titus Siame said, Hi, sir. I'm on the lookout for financial management plus. Okay. I told you to give me topics. Uh, I think you gave me some topics, I guess. So, because topics will work better for me than the subject. All right, so I believe we can go now. Everybody done with this. Now, when it comes to the activity-based costing, we're going to have the same prime cost, okay? We're going to have the same prime cost, but you've got to be careful here. The overheads is what we're going to be changing the game. So the same prime cost, 15, 15, 15, but the factory overhead will be the game changer. Why would the factory overhead be changing it? The factory overhead will be changing because of the fact that now we're going to be absorbing the overhead using the activity-based costing, which means we look at the cost drivers, we look at the cost pool, then we calculate the overhead recovery rate per the cost drive uh, per cost pool, and then we now absorb it, then we now get a total. So it is going to be a lot of work here. It's going to be a lot of work here. So let's get into it real quick. Now. Because we are doing activity-based costing, definitely we're going to just rub everything up, okay, and have a fresh board, then we do all the workings in one, then boom, we come and put the solution down. So with activity-based costing, we're going to have a couple of workings to be done. So let's go. Ah, uh, I'm just writing workings here. You good? Because everything we're about to do is workings, right? So we're gonna first, we have the cost drivers and the cost pool already. The cost pools include setup cost. Now for setup cost, what is our cost driver? For setup cost, we are going to be looking at uh, the number of setups. So we will use the cost driver, the number of setups, on the cost pool uh, setup cost. Then we see receiving. Now, what cost driver can we use for receiving? Number of deliveries received. Then we also see dispatch. And that one too, we have number of dispatch. Then we see machining. That one, we need to use the machine hours, okay? So you find a cost pool, find a cost driver, Boom, then you now do the thing. So we will start with the workings first. Like I said, I'm going to make sure that we exhaust every place here with all our workings. Then right after that, we continue with it. So let's first do a uh, calculation for the overhead recovery rate for each of the cost pools. So overhead absorption rate or overhead recovery rate, and we are doing the first one for setup. So we bring the setup overhead, and that is going to be $90,000. Then we add the three products. They are total setup. So A did 10, B did 13, C did 2. So that is going to be 25. So that's going to be 25 setups. So let's add it up, or let's divide. So 90K over 25, I'm getting $3,600. So that will be $3,600 per setup. That is the overhead recovery rate, $3,600 per setup. Then we go to the second one, overhead recovery rate for receiving. Now for receiving, the overheads we have there, it's $30,000. We divide that by the number of deliveries received. And A, B, and C, when we add the three up, that's 22 deliveries. So let's 
divide it and let's see what we get. 30,000 divided by 22, and I'm getting approximately $134, $1364 per delivery receive. Okay? Per delivery receive. Per delivery receive. Then we move on to the next one. Overhead recovery rate for dispatch. Then that one is $15,000. We divide that with the number of orders that were dispatched respectively 2020 20, 20, and that'll be 60 orders. So we divide 15,000 divided by 60, $250 per order dispatch. Is it $250? Yeah. $250 per order dispatch. I hope you are following the picture so far. So we've calculated the overhead recovery rate for the setup, for receiving, and then for dispatch. The last one is the issue about machining. Machining. So overhead absorption rate for machining. The overhead here is $55,000. Divided by, we bring the total machine hours, okay? But in this question, the examiner didn't give us the total machine hours. What he did was to give us the machine hour per unit. What it means is that we have to do our own computation of that. So let me put that down here. So we have A, B, and C. So we, we, let's bring the units. And that is 20,000, 25,000, and then 2,000. Then we bring the machine R per unit. That is two throughout. So we add it up, sorry, we multiply. That is 40,000 here. 50,000 here, and then 4,000 here. So in total, that would be 94,000 hours. I hope you are getting the idea. So this was not given to us in the question, but we need to, sorry, this was not given directly to us, but we need to compute it. We were given the machine R per unit. But when you are calculating the overhead absorption rate or the overhead recovery rate, what you need is the total machine hours. So to get the total machine hours, what do we do? We bring in the budgeted unit or the units for each of the products, 20, 25, 2, and then we multiply it respectively with the machine hours. Now, let me say that what you want to avoid is shortcuts, where some people add up the individual and then multiply it by their totals. And you want to make sure you avoid that. Please, you calculate for each of them individually. Don't add the three and add the unit and say, oh, I'm adding hours together, I'm adding units together, then I multiply the totals. You will be making a very big mistake. So you have to make sure that in all circumstances, you do for them respectively on their own, respectively on their own. So let's divide 55,000 divided by 94,000, and that is going to be, yeah, 55, I think I'm getting 0 0.59. So 55 over 49, oh, sorry, 55,000 
divided by 94,000. I'm getting 0 0.59, so sort of like 0 0.6 dollars per machine hour. You can confirm that, okay? 0 0.6 dollars per machine hour. So that is calculating the overhead recovery rate for each, for each, for each of the cost pools. Now, once you calculate the overhead recovery rate, you then now come to allocate it to each of the products using the cost drivers. Remember, this is very, very important. All right. Now, I see some of you guys joining. You are welcome to the stream. We are solving the question, Una, and uh, I posted it on my Instagram page. So in case you don't have the question, you can check it out on the Instagram, on my Instagram page. You can follow me as well on Instagram because meeting details and everything will be posted uh, on my Instagram page. So you can uh, check the question that we are solving uh, on my Instagram page. Then I see some co comments coming in here. Uh, Titus said, yes, I did even on Instagram. Oh, okay. Okay. So it will be checked out and it will be forwarded to me. Thank you very much. Uh, Inshallah, Peter said, good evening. Good evening, Inshallah. Peter, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Nusiku Lumbida said, uh, when are we doing transfer pricing? Okay, so this is a topic you are mentioning. So let me add it to my topic buckets real quick. Um, where is that? Boom. Transfer pricing. I think I don't have that here. Transfer pricing. Okay, so I have that here. So continue to follow, definitely. We will uh, hold a session uh, on that as we proceed with our discussion. And please comment in the chat box if there is any topic you want me to cover. Uh, don't give me subjects, like I say all the time. Give me topics. So if there is any topic you want me to cover on the channel, just leave it in the chat box. And also remember to give us a thumbs up on the video. That way we get more engagement and YouTube will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. Remember, my objective for doing this is to be able to assist a lot of students across so that we can provide you with the assistance you need so you prepare well for your examination and most importantly, pass the exams and take your life to the next level. So... Just smash the like button uh, for me. Let the uh, video get more engagement. And if you know someone who is doing management accounting, ACCA F2, ACCA F5, or just management accounting in uh, ICA level uh, two, then, or level one, partly, then this lecture will be for them. You can just copy the link and then share it with them so that we can reach as many students as possible. Right. So once we have finished computing and then getting our figures for the overhead recovery rate, let's come to the allocation of the overhead. Now, I'm going to do something here, and I want to make sure that you follow me carefully, okay? So let's bring the products up. A, B, and C. Slash in our dollar sign. Then we bring the cost items. So we bring the setup cost. We bring the receiving. We bring the dispatch. We bring the machining. Now I want you to stay with me carefully. To be able to get how much that will be allocated respectively, what do we do? We take the overhead recovery rate computed and multiply it by the number of uh, setup. So let's start with setup. So the overhead recovery rate is 3,600 per setup. So we need to ask ourselves, how many setup did A do? How many setup did B do? How many setup did C do? So we're gonna be using the overhead recovery rate to multiply the number of setups that each of the products did respectively so that we can get the overhead that we are going to be absorbing to the product respectively. I hope you are getting the picture. So if we go back to the question, 
a d 10 set ups. So we multiply this by 10, that should be 36,000. 3600 by 10. So 36,000 for A. Okay. B did 13 setups. So 36, 36 by 13. That would be 46, 800. And so C did only two setups. And that is 7,200. I hope you are getting the picture. So we use the overhead recovery rate to multiply the number of setups that each of the products did respectively so that we can get the overheads that we are going to be absorbing. Then let's come to the receiving. The receiving, we said the overhead recovery rate is what? 1364 per delivery received. 1364 per delivery received. So we ask ourselves, respectively for the products, how many deliveries did they receive? So let's look at it. Um, A did 10, B did 10, and C did 2. So 1, 3, 6, 4 by 10, 13, 6, 40. This is also 13, 6, 40. But 6 did only 2. That would be 2. Seven two eight two seven two eight. I hope you are following the picture. Then we come to the dispatch, and that is two fifty per other dispatch. So we go and see the cost drivers, and we realize that A, B, C, everybody did twenty twenty. So two fifty by twenty, that's going to be five thousand respectively for them. All right, 5,000 respectively for the oh, number of dispatch. What are we sharing? Dispatch, right? So, number of other dispatch. Yes, 2020 for all of them, we are right. Then the last one is machining. Machining. So, the machining, we have in here the left total machine hours for each of them, which we computed. So 0.6 by 40. That's 24,000. 0.6 by 50,000 for B. That's 30,000. And then 0.6 by 4,000. That's 2,400. I think because of approximation, we are getting short of around 600 uh, here. And uh, that happens because of the approximation. So we are sort of getting a short of 600 uh, here because the total is 55,000. So maybe the approximation is causing that. 0.6 by 40,000. Yeah, 24,000. 0.6 by 50,000. 30,000. 0.6 by 4,000. 2,400. Yeah, so the approximation is causing some uh, 600 difference between them in that case, but that's it. So we finish absorbing the overhead. So you calculate the overhead recovery rate, you absorb the overhead recovery rate, then let's get a total. So let's get a total overhead by adding them up respectively, right? So let's add them up 36,000. Plus thirteen six forty, plus five thousand, plus twenty four thousand, and that's going to be seventy eight six forty, forty six eight hundred, plus thirteen six forty, plus five thousand, plus thirty thousand, ninety five four forty. 
Then last one, 7,200 plus 2,728 plus 5,000 plus 2,400. And that is 17,328. 17,328. So these are the total overheads respectively. The total overhead, respectively. But remember, the examiner said we should calculate the cost per unit and hence profit per unit. So these are total overheads. So we need to get them on the per unit basis. So how do we do that? To get it on the per unit basis, we need to divide the total by what? The units. And we already have the units here. So we bring the production units. And that is 20,000 here, 25,000 here, and then 2,000 here. So we divide up, and that gives us the overhead per unit. The total overhead per unit. So let's divide it up. Since we have the last one, let's divide it by 2,000. And I'm getting 8.7, sort of. Second one, 95,440, divided by 25,000. I'm getting 3.82. Um, then the last one, 78,640. Let's write this for well. Divided by 20,000. And that's going to be three points. Maybe nine, three. Right? 3.93. 1723. 328 divided by 2,000. Okay, good. So that is how. We deal with the activity-based costing. So all these are workings, and we are just interested in what? Getting this. Getting the total overhead per unit. Yes. Getting the so this is what we are interested in. So that is how we deal with the absorption, sorry, the marginal, did I say marginal? Activity-based costing. So comment in the chat box, do you understand any questions for me, please? And then you put it down. I'm gonna just give you some few minutes to put it down. I'm also gonna snap this and post it on Instagram as well, so that uh, in case you made something or you don't finish and we clean it up, you can always uh, rewrite it up uh, from Instagram. So put it down and let's continue. Okay, so Mohammed Nassif Suleiman said, well understood. Okay, that is fine. That is fine. If you have any questions, you put it in the chat box for me. So now that we have the overhead for each unit under the activity base, we can now prepare the cost sheet or the cost card. So let me just give some two minutes quickly for those of you who are writing on the screen so you can put it down and there we go.
Okay, so let's go. So let's prepare the first part and certainly the profit statement. Okay, so cost cut, and we are using the activity based costing. Now, three products, so let's bring them up. A, B, and then C. Now, since we have the prime cost already from the absorption costing, we will start with prime cost, okay? So let me pick my prime cost up from the absorption costing. That's 15, respectively. Then we add factory overheads. From the workings we did, 3.93, 3.82, 8 8.7. That'll be production cost. So let's add it up respectively. 18.93 here, I guess. Uh, eighteen point eight two here, and then twenty three point seven there as well. Twenty three point seven. So that is the production cost. Now, if you compare this to what we did under the uh, absorption costing, realize that under absorption costing, product A was twenty point six three, B was seventeen point eight four, and C was seventeen point eight four. But right now, if, when we now absorb the overhead based on the activity levels that each of the products did, you can see that we are having what? A lot on the product C, a lot on uh, product B as well, as compared to what we did from the absorption costing uh, class. So let's bring our selling price. And our selling price, $20 running through. So profit or loss? So what do we have? This will be negative 3.2, 3.7. So you see that product C under the activity-based costing is actually a loss-making product. So this is going to be 1.22 or 1.18, sorry. And this will be 1.07. Let's confirm that. 20 minus 18.93. Yeah, 1.07. 20 minus 18.82. 1.18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... That is the cost sheet under activity-based costing. That is the cost sheet under the activity-based costing. So like I said in a, mo a moment ago, under activity-based costing, you are now absorbing the overheads, not using a standard benchmark of labor hours, like in absorption costing. Instead, you are absorbing the overhead based on the activities, based on the things that actually each product is undertaken or each product is spending for the period under consideration. So this is what you must understand when we talk about the cost statement, the profit statement in uh, management accounting 
taking into consideration the issue about absorption costing, marginal costing, and activity-based costing. Any questions for me, please? Any questions for me? Okay. Right. So that is it about uh, this. And uh, this brings us to the closure of... Uh, the discussion on profit statements, discussion on some of the uh, funda foundations or basics in management accounting. Remember that we started the journey with uh, what is management accounting, objectives of cost accounting. We came to overhead, sorry, cost classification by function, by nature, by uh, uh, behavior. We spoke about high and low method and all of those things. We came to classification of overhead allocation, apportionment, overhead absorption. Then we discussed the issue about the activity-based costing. And then we solved some questions on activity, uh, marginal and absorption costing yesterday. And today we just finished solving a question on absorption costing as well as on activity-based costing. So if there are no other questions for me, I'm gonna sign up, uh, sign up today here. It's always a pleasure coming your way and then being on the live stream uh, with you guys and assisting you with any uh, thing that you have. So if you have any questions for me, you can uh, just drop it in the chat box for me so I reply to them. And then also, if you have any inquiries, you know how to reach us, 050-114-9296. 0501149296. Uh, our online courses are available in case you would want to enroll in or study directly under my mentorship. Get access to all the lecture videos, the ebook catalogs, the question kits, and the personalized mentorship sessions with me. Then certainly you can uh, call us and then let's see how I can assist you for you to prepare well for the examination. So that is it uh, for today. Let's see and give shout outs to some people real quick. So Esther Kosa, uh, Kobla Seiram, um, Gabriel Kogu, Ezekiel, Baidin, Mohammed Nasib, uh, Mam, Ann, uh, Nusiku, uh, uh, Juliana Odai, Titus, George Ampofo, Peter Isola, and then everybody. So thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a pleasure. Gabriel Gogu said, God bless you for your dedication. Amen. God bless you too. So thank you very much for joining the stream. Let's come again tomorrow, meet tomorrow, uh, same time, 4.30 p.m. Remember, the discussion will be posted. Whatever it is, we'll be covering tomorrow. Will be posted on my Instagram page, and so you can follow me on Instagram at Ishira Premium. And also from Monday going, we'll be releasing two videos in a day uh, to help you to really summarize. We'll be releasing some summary videos on various aspects, uh, but not on this basic channel. It will be on my second YouTube channel. So you can check out my second YouTube channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description. It is the Insura Premium Show. The Insura Premium Show. So that is my second YouTube channel. The Insura Premium Show. The Insura Premium Show. So you can check out that. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, how do we call it? Channel as well. From Monday 
we're going to be releasing some summary videos, summary videos on that channel. The reason is that releasing two videos at a go like that on this channel will not really help us that much uh, at this time. So we are putting them on the second channel, okay? So that on the second channel, the summary videos will be there. Then on this main channel, our live stream and other sessions will be held here. So make sure you subscribe to that channel as well, Ishira Premium Show, the Ishira Premium Show. And then let's see how we can provide you with the contents that you need in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So thank you very much, Joe, for joining the stream. I'll see you same time tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. As we continue with our discussion for the ICA November 2020 examination. Take care of yourself and stay blessed. Bye-bye.